Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you need IT consulting, go to willyhow.com, fill out the contact form, or click the Hire Us button, send your information over, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. You can also support the channel by using all of our clearly marked affiliate links below. All right, so what we're looking at in this video is TerraMaster. If you haven't heard of them, they are a, a NAS company that competes with that competes with Synology and QNAP, and they sent over the TerraMaster F2423. It's a two-disc NAS, and um, they have a pledge that they will respond to you within 24 hours if you have support issues. So uh, it did not come with discs. I had to put my own hard drives in, so I've got a couple uh, Iron Wolf drives that I, that I put in here. And these are the four terabyte uh, Iron Wolf drives. Provided these myself. But you can see that this drive tray is the, is similar to uh, other manufacturers, where um, you don't have to necessarily use screws to put the drives in. It's got the plastic thing on the side uh, that snaps in. So on the back of this, we've got a huge system fan. We've got some USB ports, HDMI, uh, two. 2.5 gigabit uh, ports. Feet on the bottom comes with a power supply. Uh, I'm interested to see exactly uh, you know what is happening in here. So it does run an Intel Celeron. It uh, uses the x86 64 bit instruction set. Uh, comes with four gigs of RAM out of the box, upgradable to 32 gigs. Uh, does take all size of SATA hard drives and SSDs. Uh, single volume is 108 uh, terabytes, so um, there is a way to expand the storage capability. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fire this up. I'm gonna take it in, plug it in. I've never plugged this in before, so it'll be brand new, so we're gonna set this up together. I know, that's exciting, right? New products, and then I'm going to run it for a little while. And then uh, I saw somebody else actually installed a different operating system on theirs. Maybe I'll do that. I'm going to do that with the QNAP that I've got. But let's uh, we'll fire it up and take a look at the operating system, do a quick cruise through it, and see what happens. We'll be right back. All right, so I've got everything plugged in. And I went and I found the IP address for the NAS and browsed to the IP. So here's what it looks like. Initialization. It's got your IP address. Only one LAN uh, port can be connected during initialization. Please keep it connected to the internet. Otherwise, you cannot install TOS online. So the uh, TerraMaster operating system, you can do an auto install or we can download it, manually install it. it. Tells us to make sure that our hard drives are compatible. And here's the big start button. So let's do it. And how do you want to initialize your TNAS? Uh, let's just do automatic. Data on the hard drives will be deleted. Confirm. Yep. So uh, hard drive checkup. So it is going to check each of those drives, and it says it could take three to ten minutes. So we'll be back. All right. While I was looking away, the uh, install TOS, the TerraStation uh, operating system, it started uh, installing, so it's going to go ahead and install, and we will be right back. Here we are, back at the screen. Operating system loaded. So far, this is going pretty smooth. Like I said, this is the first time I've ever touched this device. I'm going to leave the name the same, and we're going to um, put in our lab username and password. And I've got to find my time zone. There it is, central time. Security email. Um, I think I'm going to, can I skip that? Nope, it makes us put that in there. And let's see, send code. Let's see if I get anything in my email. Nope, nothing in my email yet. Can't receive email, skip this. So, 
we can hit skip this warning this operation will delete data on the hard drive do you want to continue confirm okay so now after it checked the drives and after it did all those things now it's got a format uh the raid looks like it's going pretty quickly it says it'll take three to 20 minutes but it looks like it's going to be closer to the, the three minutes but we're going to let this uh we're going to let this go i think about the about the time i get all the gear shut down uh to pause this and then bring it back up it'll probably just about be done okay so that definitely did not take uh three minutes so let's see, we've got our username, password, we've got the TNAS ID. Not sure what that's all about. That might be, um, you know, kind of like a quick connect or something like that. But we'll save. So it downloaded a screenshot. So we'll go next. And let's see what happens loading. Okay, so this is not a bad looking desktop. Got the... Uh, little dashboard over here gives us our memory how much storage is in there okay so let's see user settings we can do storage quotas usernames passwords I can change my uh, background that's kind of cool um, okay so there's some options where you like don't need to be prompted to log out one thing that I didn't see there was a multi-factor authentication. So this is the desktop. First time I've ever seen it. So let's open up control panels. Pretty snappy. So we can set up users here. Looks like we can do groups. We can do shared folders, remote folders, domain LDAP. Can we bind this? We can. We can bind this to a domain. So that's good. Remote folder. We can mount a remote NFS or an SMB share. That's kind of nice. We can create a new one, create a shared folder or ISO shared folders. All right, what else we got here? So networks, boy, doesn't this control panel look pretty familiar? <clears throat> Under network, and our network interface, LAN2 connected. Now, I don't have this hooked into a 2.5 gig uh, port. If I did, you would see that. So general, here's where we can change the name. We can change the HTTP and HTTPS access ports. So I don't see an option to auto redirect to HTTPS, but that's okay. Here's all of our different file services. So it looks like they are uh, disabled by default, which would make sense. AFP seems to be enabled. FTP was enabled. So SMB was disabled. Everything else appears to be uh, enabled terminal and SNMP discovery service. So it can do U UPnP. Okay. <clears throat> Under volume. Okay. We can see that our, our raid one is synchronizing. So it's going to be slow, you know, until that's done. We've got our default storage pool. We can take a look at our hard drives here and it knows that it is an iron wolf. A virtual disk we don't have any virtual disks yet external storage we don't have anything for USB and we don't have a hot spare let's see region and language hardware and power working fan smart fan which obviously probably takes temperature into control the buzzer will beep when the following situations occur raid hard drive is missing the system boots or the system shuts down we should probably do hardware over temperature as well we never want those hard drives to go to sleep uh, for what we're doing okay so here is the notification setup man this control panel is pretty similar here's uh, security so we can do Let's see if we can add. So we can import a certificate or we can create a self-signed certificate. doesn't look like there are any um, options here for like Let's Encrypt. Maybe that's coming in the future. But we are going to, it's got a firewall, which is blank by default account safety. So it can do auto blocking um, of IPs that, that fail to authenticate. Update and recovery. Okay, so I still haven't seen anything about 
uh, multi-factor authentication. I just may be missing that. So here's that uh, hardware information, four cores, four threads at two gigahertz each, four gigs of RAM, fam, fan speed is at 1,046 RPMs. And we don't really have much going on here. Like I said, this thing is just out of the box. And let's take a look at like the applications that we can install. All right, so there's Alibaba, Amazon S3, AOMEI Backupper, not sure what that is, Tomcat, A-Tutor, Backblaze, Box Sync, Coppermine, Clam AV, Docker, Duple Backup Vault, Duple Backup. Interesting. So we're going to play with a lot of these. MB. Elephant Drive, um, Ice HRM, DNS Server, Proxy Server, iSCSI Target Pro, iSCSI Target, Java Virtual Machine, Lazy Librarian, Lime Survey, Mail Server. So I'm seeing, you know, there's a lot of open source stuff. There's a lot of familiar stuff. Uh, Orange HRM. And then I saw OwnCloud. Let's see, podcast generator, snapshots, transmission, USB copy, virtual here, VPN server. This is interesting. So it's PPTP, OpenVPN, L2TP, IPsec. We'll install that real quick and take a look at this. While that's installing, we can go back. VTiger, CRM, WordPress, Yandex, VirtualBox. Okay, that's interesting. Centralized backup and Portainer. If you've never used Portainer, people who uh, do containerized stuff, they love it. So we're going to have to take a lot closer look at some of these apps. If you are running one of these and you have these apps run, and let me know down in the comments, would you? Let's take a look real quick. Settings, open VPN. We're going to enable it. 172.10. Well, that's uh, unfortunate because 172.10 is an actual outside um, dress uh, range that we shouldn't use internally. It's 172.16 to 172.31. And, I mean, this looks exactly like our other... Um, our other NAS's VPN server. What do you think about this so far? Um, link list, permissions, admin, confirm. All right, so here's the backup app. So we can do an rsync or a time machine. I mean, I will give it this. The, the this is, it's snappy. It's very snappy. So, this is kind of a first look. I, I'm going to uh, play around with this, do some more videos on it, add it to the uh, group of NASAs. What do you think? I think it's I think it's very snappy. I don't know whether to be impressed yet or not. They did send it over for me to take a look at. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to you know, run VPN on it. I'm going to run some of the other applications. What do you want to see me do? Put it down in the comments. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below. All of our affiliate links are down below, along with the link for IT consulting. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.